Marshall County Municipal Court uh, to order November 1st, 2016. The, uh, can you hear me, Denise? You good? The first uh, order we want to do is under correspondence um, November 9th at 4.30 p.m. Um, we need to call a special meeting for the fiscal court. We're going to be meeting with uh, Calvert City Council and the Riverport Authority Board, and we're going to be discussing uh, uh, McFarland Road, basically access to Sharkow, uh, 1523. So I just want to make that. And Jeff, I think that announcement takes care of the publicly notifying. Anybody got any questions on that? Any conflicts as far as times, dates? That's going to be at Calvert City's uh, downstairs at the City Hall, in the basement. All right. Going to old business, approve the minutes for October 18th. Motion to approve the minutes, Judge. It's written. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next is the fiscal court vehicles. You've got a list. information from last court and I think we are at boy, this is some fine print even with my glasses on can y'all see that <laughs> um, Brad can you tell us what vehicles we were looking at for the county yeah um, so on here you, you see the the vendor listed by uh, Enterprise and Parkway Chry Chrysler um, we're looking for one um, crew cab, uh, three-quarter ton, ton truck, and one SUV um, all-wheel drive uh, vehicle. Um, so these are the list of options. Um, I think the biggest, the one thing that we didn't get uh, prior, or I didn't get it on this sheet, was the maintenance specs. Um, but you can see where on um, the two... Enterprise vehicles for the truck, it was forty-five thirty-two a month for maintenance, and the other one was forty-one twenty-nine a month for maintenance. And then for Park Recleasher, it's thirty dollars a month for maintenance charges. So, um, from what I understand, Enterprise's maintenance specs are pretty much it covers everything: routine maintenance and uh, major. I mean, if a transmission uh, transmission goes bad, they will replace that. The only thing it doesn't cover is um, tires and um, brakes because the way that Enterprise uh, structured this, their lease program is you'll basically re refresh those vehicles out before your tires and your um, brakes go bad. So those are the only two things that their maintenance doesn't cover. Um, I just received uh, Parkway questions and I see Courtney's here. Um, uh, and so there's a lot, of, a lot of things in their maintenance agreements that if you wanted to... Um, Ask Courtney. I think he can he can kind of shed some more light on that. But those were really the two differences that we I think we were looking at um, trying to figure out going forward. I couldn't I couldn't really compare apples to apples. I thought that was the intent with uh, I figured with this. With this I mean, it, it's, well, it's actually more confusing to me, but I, I tried to get some explanation. I think it would be important, maybe helpful, if Courtney would explain the difference in uh, the open end and closed end. Uh, that's where I think the, the cost differential comes into play. Sure, sure. You want to? Come, come up here to the mic so everybody can hear you, Courtney. Thank you. Thank you all for the opportunity to, to come in here and, and stand before you and bid on these vehicles. Um, one of the things I'll tell you about the difference in an open end and a, and a closed end lease, we at Parkway Chrysler have offered you a closed end lease. We're going to be a little bit higher on your payment, as, as, you, as you can see, but at the end of that lease, you can't hand me the keys and you walk away from that lease. That's a closed end lease. On an open end lease, you have all kinds of liabilities. That vehicle actually belongs to you, and until it is sold, then you find out where you actually played out in the economics of the lease on an open-end lease. So that's why that I went to a closed-end lease, because it's better, in my opinion, of course, for the court system and for the county to be able to know 
where you're budgeting your money and how you're budgeting in the long run. We have put together a package for you. I sent out, or I, I gave to Brad late yesterday afternoon the, the uh, service contract that I have put in these vehicles for the county. If you go a 48 month lease, I can put a basically a bumper to bumper warranty on these vehicles. That's that extra $30 a month. And it also has your oil changes and things like that in it. And again, it's not gonna cover belts, tires, and brakes. Okay, it's not gonna cover those things, but it'll cover light bulbs. It'll cover um, air conditioner switches, window switches, whatever the case may be in this situation. So I think that you'll find that it's a very good coverage amount in that situation. Um, that is basically what I can tell you is just to caution yourself, and I, I hope I get the bid. If I don't, I don't. But just at the end of that bid, at the end of that term is what you're looking at is where that your actual liability lies in that open-ended lease versus that closed-ended lease. Now, I have had a question from you, Miss Wendy, about putting a, a salt box in the back of my truck. Do it. Put a snow plow on it. We don't care. Okay. It's not a problem. So that's where we are in this lease, in this, in this process. If you well, have any other questions, throw them at me, and I'll be glad to help you out anywhere I can. That, that's certainly something to take into consideration. If you put salt in there, you've got a, the difference in the open-end lease and a closed-end lease, and you give that truck back after using it for 48 months with uh, salt in the back of it, you know, the, the, the dollars that you're going to get for that, that's where you're going to, it's going to make a difference, no a, bit, a huge difference, particularly in those trucks. If you talk about having to replace a bed, a tailgate, wiring systems and the whole nine yards in the back of a truck, a three quarter ton truck after using it for four years in the winter time, right. that could be a drastic amount of money for you. Right. So that is something to be considered there. We're, we're actually going to be, uh, it's not, it's not on your agenda. We just uh, talked about this yesterday. We're going to be talking exactly about that. We got a vehicle down at the road department that is just torn up with uh, the salt, what the salt's done to it. That, I think that was my biggest concern with her vehicles. So that, that answers my concern as far as putting a plow on it. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank yes, you, Courtney. Did y'all have anything else? Well, with that information, we're talking about uh, putting a plow on it and putting a salt box in it, then that's certainly going to, with this open-end lease, that's certainly going to affect the resale or the value of the vehicle at the end of the lease period. Could right. dramatically yeah. in four years. Yeah, this other vehicle that we're talking about replacing, I mean, it's totally rusted out underneath, and that's what we'd planned on pulling this new water jitter with, so it's... We had one a few years ago. Yeah, the frame was mm -hmm. basically... Yeah, it's, it's really bad. Gone. Well, this one's the same way. We, right. look, we looked at it Friday, yeah. and it's actually Yeah, that's the one happen. ton that we're going right. to bring up today, but... And I think Wendy had... Um, talked to I think the judge and, and me about what her recommendation was for um, on this sheet which one she wants to recommend so yeah um, on the three-quarter ton I think that we need to go with at least 15,000 miles a year on our vehicles at the road department in the three-year term yeah the terms just up to y'all that's If you know that you're going to, if you can look at your average of what you're using this truck for and you know what it is up front, you can buy extra miles up front on this lease and they're 20 cents a mile, okay? If you don't buy them up front and you go over your mileage, it's fine, but it's going to be 25 cents a mile at the end of the lease. That is something that you all do need to consider in your situation. Yeah, and I think you looked at that and right now we're about what, 12, 13? Yeah, the average was around 12,000. Yeah. There's a couple that go over 15, but... Um, not the ones that we're replacing right now. Okay. Appreciate it. So in that scenario, she's looking at that um, 15,000 miles. There's three options on the crew cab, 2,500. Monthly cost of the three year is 55, I'm sorry, 555. Um, the four year is 522 a month. And the, well, we probably wouldn't do the six year because the maintenance agreement doesn't apply to Not available. or the five year right so really you're considering the three year and the four year um, uh, lease options
Judge, do we need to act on this or are we prepared to act on this? I'm prepared yeah. to act on this. Huh? Yeah, I think we do. Um, I think we've got two things. One, we might be able to tie this in, basically uh, bid, who's going to get the bid and which package we want. The uh, three or four year. How does it matter? I mean, four year, it's a little cheaper a month, but it'd be better for you. Still walk away. Yeah, I mean, there's not much difference, so it's just up to the court what they well, want. Well, your, let's see, your average miles per year. Um, she was under there, to make, 12, That's about the only thing we have to do is monitor the, the average miles per year. And right, to make sure we don't fine. go over 15,000. Yeah. Yeah. So four years. Yeah, I mean, I that's like average if you go over a little one year and start to watch it the next. Right. Time to adjust. I move that we purchase the vehicles from Parkway Chrysler, local vendor, for a four-year period. I'll second that. And you, this is for the crew cab? Yes. Okay. 2500 Yep. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. How many, we've got how many other vehicles? That, uh, the, the other three that were uh, bid on were from Enterprise. It was a 2017 Ford Explorer. Um, and from Parkway Chrysler, there was a uh, 2017 all-wheel drive Jeep Cherokee, both in a six-cylinder and a four-cylinder, cylinder, and then a 2017 all-wheel drive uh, Dodge Durango. I think these vehicles, um, you know, it's un, it's it's not uh, some of these vehicles that the county's going to have, uh, like GIS and IT. It may not be used. It's not going to be used as much as Wendy's vehicle. She's going to be driving. Was that a truck? <clears throat> um, but those vehicles, I don't suspect, will be driven as much as uh, the road department's vehicles. Um, but I still think a 15,000 mile will give us a buffer um, when it comes time to, at the end of the uh, two, three year, whatever term we choose. Do we well, want to stay? Uh, cons I mean, if you're talking about another truck, the, the 10,000 miles on the 2,500 is the same as the, what we just purchased on the, uh, the four years and the 15,000 miles, same monthly fee. Which one, Bob? If you go to the 10,000 miles on the crew cab. Yeah. Three years. If you do a three year on the crew cab, it, uh, it's the same 522 as it is for the four year on the, at 15,000 miles. Mm -hmm. This is well off taking four years and 15,000 miles, same money. If you want a truck for the park, looks like to me anyway. Yeah, I saw Dennis come in here. Dennis, do you think 10,000 miles? I mean, if you go, if you do that, if you do the four years, 15,000, you can get 15,000. It's the same money, yeah. except you got another extra year there, you're going to use it. But. I was more comfortable with 15. But it looks like 50. The only way you'd save would be a four year 10,000 lease. It's a little less. But a three year 10,000 lease is the same as <coughs> four-year, 15,000 lease. So. Do you need a crew cab or a 1,500 four-wheel drive? You get 15,000. Crew cab? They're both crew cab. One's a 1,500, one's a 2,500. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Twenty five hundred. Okay. All right. So pretty much uh, the same one as the road department. Just extended to the four year term. Yep. Yeah, that's what I, I'd, I'd move it if that's what if we need one for the park. That that's what we get. I mean, and then on top of that, we could also we could also use it 
if we if it got in a real need, we could actually use it for snow removal if we needed to, if that's what it came down to. At some point, we could actually gear it up and, and use it if we had a bad winter. Is there a second? Is that a motion, Bob? Can I ask you a question? That yeah. I know the sheriff's vehicles have been budgeted. Have these vehicles been budgeted, all the ones that we're talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> All right, we need one more. And I think we need one for uh, GIS and I, uh, IT department. Um, I think the the big, and I don't know, maybe, Courtney, you can ask answer this on, on the, I mean, it looks like we're kind of trending towards using Parkway Chrysler, but um, the difference between the Cherokee and the Durango uh, size, Durango's. Okay, so. so. Very close to the same money. Yeah. Do we know anything about mileage with them? I mean, it's not much difference in the money. I, yeah, I mean, I would say to stay safe, you would go 15,000 miles in four years. four years. Yeah, we're going to be doing some mapping, but but I, I think 15,000 would be <coughs> consistent. Uh, Durango for four years then, I'd move that we go ahead and get that for GIS. From the local vendor. Yes. Second. Right here. Favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'm kind of a proponent of, of, of purchasing, but uh, if it's, well, I don't mind trying this and see if it works. That was the full year. Yep. All right, we'll move on to uh, the sheriff's vehicles. You've got the uh, paperwork in front of you. Uh, he had submitted on those vehicles, basically, So you do get the uh, bid paperwork. There's only one bid, so um, the two-page document that is in your package, the sheriff's vehicle proposal. You've got the 2017 Charger, and you've got 2017 Durango. Uh, let's see, two or three vehicles total. Uh, we had budgeted 130,000. Two Durangos and one Charger is what uh, uh, the sheriff has requested. That's within our budget budget limit, with all of them geared up and ready to go. I would I would move we move forward with purchasing those vehicles, the two Durangos and one Charger for the sheriff. I'll second that. Who's the first and the second? I think we need to have a discussion. Okay. Um, we budgeted 130,000. <coughs> Looking at the the numbers, I think that we might be able to save some money. Um, I just want the court to understand that we don't know yet what the end of the year, um, as far as ABC monies, uh, what that dollar amount's gonna be. I think the next quarter that um, Scott's gonna be presenting to us is in November. 20th and then you've got uh, three more quarters before the end of the fiscal year I think 465,000 which was budgeted uh, at the rate of last quarter which I think was 101,000 uh, we're projecting to be below so I think that we just need to understand what those numbers look like 
it's either on the front end or the back end. I think for, for the 130 that we had budgeted, there's actually an opportunity to save some money. We can still purchase three vehicles. Um, you've got two Durangos. I think you can save $15,000 in this budgeted line item with three chargers. And then at the end of the fiscal year, if those numbers come in that we had projected are at or above, then we're ahead. But if we're short, we're gonna be pulling dollars again. We'll, we don't know how much we'll have to be pulling out of the general funds. So I'll just throw that out there. I think um, three chargers at 25,000 a piece, we might be able to save about $15,000. The, the alcohol money, as you said, is, is just a big gas. We have no idea, uncharted waters. We have no idea of the, of the income uh, that will be generated. It's just all a gas right now, so. Right, and originally, you know, the sheriff wanted two vehicles. We're getting, we're getting three. Uh, you're shaking your head. No, sir, it wasn't originally two. It was always three. at your office that you'd said you you were looking that you'd probably go down to two. If I could get three out of it, I said I would try to get three out of it if we could make it fit for the amount budgeted. I mean, whatever y'all want to do, that's up to y'all. It's out of my hands. If y'all want to do three chargers, y'all do three chargers. If you want to do two, you do two. Well, it's... That's not what I understood. I understood uh, the judge suggested three chargers. I don't think it's the difference in two and three. I think the, I think his statement was uh, uh, three to save three vehicles, but to save the $5,000 on two of the vehicles and get chargers instead of Durango's. At this point, I and need cars, whatever y'all want to do, do it. What are the other dollars of ABC dollars budgeted for? Um, They range between, we have about, there's $70,000 right off the top that we can nix. We budgeted $50,000 for reserves. We don't have to put that back. And then there's $20,000 worth of rent. So if, if, we, if we are short, those are the two, first two things that we will not fund. Um, and then at that point, we have to do administration. Um, at that point, then we start looking at what we have budgeted for the sheriff and, and pulling from where we can. If um, with our ABC administrator doing the nuisance code enforcement, that um, will allow probably about $4,000 to be not funded in administration. So that puts us at almost 75,000. And um, next month, this month, late this, the 20th this month is when the August, September and October October quarter is due for ABC. That'll give us a good idea of, of where we're looking at. So um, I, I think if you all want whatever you all decide to, to purchase, we can, um, if ABC falls short, we you all have the capability of funding the remaining amount with the general fund dollars. Um, we do have that possibility. But it's just, it's one of those things we don't know what we have yet. That would be after you had reserves, you had, you had eliminated reserves. And yes, yeah, that's ABC gonna be, and, and I don't know that it's gonna be 100,000 short. Um, we had a, a good quarter in August, but that's, that's our summer months, but we also didn't have every store open and they didn't have good stock in some places. So. What does that number need to be to stay on schedule? Uh, for those three we, we months, we budgeted quarter. 465. Yeah. So, so I mean, I know we got 50,000. Yeah. Roughly it would have first. to be pretty high. What did, what's it need to be? But to be on schedule, about 122. 115. Yeah. 20, okay. Yeah. The thing and, and is, then, is that you get. <coughs> I mean, you're getting three vehicles now with what we can budget. We're saving 15,000. Um, the Taxpayers aren't going to be on the hook in the long run if we are short. We get three vehicles, that's what you need. If those monies come in uh, and we're at or above 465,
then that's 15,000 that you've got left in that line item. Uh, and if there's any additional monies, you might even have enough to buy another vehicle. But I, th I think what's important is that when we make this decision, we, we've got an opportunity now to get three vehicles and save some money uh, and not be handcuffing ourselves um, down the road. Judge, I just was, I know we're talking about three, but I guess um, to the sheriff, between the Durango and the Charger, I mean, I guess justifying one over the other, um, maybe that, that'll help in the discussion. If, if he needs two Durangos, what, the clarification between why Durango over a Charger. Because the SUV has more room in them for the amount of equipment we carry. Uh, they do have a pretty good trunk space in them, the chargers, but it's a small opening. So if we have to get anything out, we have to stop, unload to get what we need out that say, you know, that, that costs time. Uh, some of the places that we go, I don't know that the charger's gonna hold up. I don't know. I've never, we've never had an all wheel drive car. Crossing medians and things such as certainly that. Won't have have the ground that. I don't know. Sure. They won't have the ground clearance set up mm -hmm. Durango wheel, that's for certain. And like I said, I, there are places that we go that I don't know that the Charger will be able to go, whereas that Durango or the SUV will. Sure. I just thought that was that's, pretty That's the only thing I'm, that's what I'm looking at is the amount of room that's in them and it can go places that that car won't be able to go. Like I said, whatever the court decides to do, I'm at the point I need cars. Let me ask you this, if, if uh, uh, we were, and when I made the motion in the last meeting and retracted that motion, when we st started talking about looking, stretching that $130,000 that was budgeted, uh, as Emily and, and Brad said, my motion was based on, I thought we were buying two vehicles at the time. If if you need if you need vehicles, I have no problem with, with going with three vehicles, but but uh, certainly with the unknown of the alcohol uh, revenue. Uh, and, and I understand that, but I am, I'm two years behind on purchasing vehicles. I, I, I mean, I, I, I want the, the, the Sheriff's Department to have the vehicles they need in, in the three vehicles. And if we get three vehicles and st still save $5,000 between the Durango, I think that's the best of both worlds and with the uncertainty of the alcohol money. Get three vehicles, save five thousand dollars a vehicle, and and uh, I just don't think we need to handcuff ourselves. I think you have an opportunity to save some money, uh, give yourself a cushion um, instead of I think one hundred thirty was budgeted and. 128,759 is what was gonna be spent with 1241 left over. Uh, I think we can maximize uh, some of those monies. Like I said, whatever court wants to do, I'm in need of cars. I think, I don't know if the motion on the table was clear as far as which cars to get, but I think there was a motion. It was clear. For the two Durangos and the Charger. So we'll take a, we can take a vote on that motion. If you want to two, do two Durangos and a Charger, or we can retract the motion and do three Chargers. I thought this was what he needed, and I don't have any problem. I feel like we've got monies that we've got a buffer even in now without the and it'll be more like a $20,000 savings, but it looks like we've got buffer in there for 50 in reserves and, and some other issue. I mean, some other monies that we can draw right out of the ABC funds that'll cover this. And I, again, we had two, what, 12 inch snows last year that a charger is not gonna go through as well as a Durango will. I think he's got, what, four Humvees for that? You put your people in Humvees? I mean, that's just management of vehicles for inclement weather. Well, all these monies are based on alcohol revenue forecast, aren't they? 
correct? Yes. That's what we're buying it with. And obviously we've uh, made that perfectly clear that, that we think we're, or so far we're not on, on course to receive those revenues. So correct. Spending money and then worrying about how we're going to pay for it later is not a very good uh, option. Those we already are have buffers built in. in. Well, the buff we buffers are in our can... reserve and so forth. And I'm it's not our reserve I... and ABC reserve. Right, I, I, I understand that. But then after that, I was explained <laughs> after that, then we would, you know, go to other sources to retrieve that money. I... There's, there's, there's buffers built in the ABCs, but there's none built in his budget. We've already moved some monies in his budget. Uh, I think this is an opportunity to put a buffer in there um, because it is unknowns. And they are needed, so. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you're getting three vehicles. Yeah. So if the motion is not going to be retracted, then we'll take a vote. Vote hey, wait, for. Has there been a second? Yes. Yeah. Um, a vote for two Durangos and a Charger. All those say for it, say aye. Uh. Aye. Those against it say no. 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 So that's a, a tie on that. I guess we've got to wait 15. Or it's dead on the table. Yeah, that's dead. That's not like the uh, it's not our personnel. No. Okay. So then can we do a motion for three charges? The court can, you know, if there's another motion in second, then that can be Sheriff said he needs vehicles, he needs vehicles and, and, so. uh, and certainly, like I say, I want him to have the vehicles he needs, and I have no problem with getting three vehicles instead of two, but, but uh, I just don't think with uh, the alcohol revenues that I'm prepared to uh, uh, pass the opportunity to save $15,000, and, and uh, I'll move that uh, we buy the three, go ahead and buy the three vehicles and buy the chargers. I want to oppose that. I'll second it. Any discussion? Motion to purchase three chargers. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Sanitation can, can, district can you, number. Can you clarify that? Because I'm confused. Because did you take two different votes just then? or? Well, the first one died. Which Which vote are you talking about? Well, the first one was a two-two tie, and dies. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Dies is All right. On the table. Uh, sanitation district number two. Um, I want to give you an update, but I've got Chad uh, from Rivercrest. Chad McCain here from Rivercrest uh, to speak on this too. The um, the R and R piping and the District 2 uh, operator, Lindell Groves, they've been working on the plant. And I know that there's, there's some people that, uh, it's hard to educate people in the community as far as what's going on uh, with sanitation number two. Um, but they have been working diligently down there at that plant, getting it uh, uh, in compliance. And we've got a video. I had them take a video because I don't think the people in the community truly understand, one, what these men go through. Uh, I know some do, uh, but others <coughs> need to understand exactly uh, what is going on down at the plant and the condition of this plant. They drained one of the tanks. And if you got a weak stomach, you don't need to watch. But we're going to put this video up so you can watch it. This is tank two at the sanitation district plant. And it is not supposed to look like this. This is debris that gets into the plant and it basically compromises the operation uh, of the components in the plant. Um, there's pieces that are missing. Uh, you couldn't find it. I mean, this, this particular tank um, just wasn't working at the operation level that it was supposed to be working at. It's just one more thing to show uh, the people in the county of what can happen if you don't maintain your equipment uh, and if you don't maintain uh, the plant the way it's supposed to be maintained. The tanks are being drained, they're being emptied out. 
R and R is coming in behind them, and R and R. Did you get that, Denise? I'm sorry, I'm in. Uh, R and R is coming in behind them to actually fix now what originally was left off the plant, uh, so that when we fix this, hopefully we're done with it. We can move forward and, and get in this district to the level that it needs to be in. Um, but I've asked Chad to come in this morning. Um, did y'all get the paperwork? Uh, it shows kind of the um, both District 1 and District 2. Do they have that, Des? Okay. Um, it basically shows um, what's needed. Uh, and again, we're under a greed ordinance order with the uh, Department of Water. Um, and first thing we need to do is get in compliance uh, before we move forward. But Chad, if you don't mind giving us uh, uh, an overview or a summary of what uh, options we have moving forward with the uh, combining both District 1 and District 2. Okay. Thank you. Again, my name is Chad McCann with Rivercrest Engineering. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to work with the judge and the sanitation districts here over the last several months. And just looking at the two sanitation districts in a whole, um, evaluating their needs, looking at their sanitary sewer um, collection and wastewater treatment systems. The summary that you're looking at is a list of what we'll call priority projects for the two districts you know, as they sit today. And um, these, again, have been put together based on, we took an initial review uh, looking at the sanitation district number one. Uh, we came into the picture.